In regards to a lateral pelvic tilt, uh, the question always comes up, well, what if the right side is higher compared to the left, or what if the left side is higher compared to the right? Would you do the same uh, exercise? Yes, because remember, the pelvis is attached to lots of muscles. All right, so when a pelvis gets stuck forward on the left compared to the right side, everything orients to the right and it pushes your weight to the right side, to your right foot. So it's, it's right stance, right? So your weight is on the right foot, pelvis on the left side is forward compared to the right. That's the underlying pelvic asymmetry. I have yet to find someone with a right side forward compared to the left. Now, both sides can be forward, so you can have a left side that goes forward first, and then over time, in order to deal with this asymmetry, the body will then push the left side forward also. I'm sorry, the right side forward also. But the underlying pattern is still a left side forward compared to the right. I have yet to see a right side forward compared to the left. And again, how do we know? We don't go by visuals, we go by testing. When a pelvis is rotated forward on one side, it will prevent or allow certain ranges of motion of the leg on that side. So if a pelvis is forward on the left, the left leg will not adduct. It won't go down, but it will abduct. And the reverse occurs on the right. Because the left side's forward and the right side's back, the right side will adduct, but it won't abduct quite so high. It won't go up. All right, it'll go down, but it won't go up. So everything is just reversed. Remember, everything in the body is reversed. Right side does one thing. Sorry, right side does one thing. Left side does the other. This is walking. Exaggerated, but this is walking. This is what it should do. But when a left side is forward compared to the right and never gets back so the pelvis can't orient to the left, you're stuck in a position that you can't get out of. So regardless of which side looks higher, because remember, any muscle can spasm. Again, usually it's the QLs. Uh, the psoas can contribute also, but I think the QL is a, a bigger, uh, contributes more to the visual of a, of a lateral tilt. But, the, but what you're seeing does not necessarily give you all the information, so that's why you have to go by testing. But the testing is always gonna show that the pelvis is forward on the left compared to the right, or perhaps both sides are forward. Either way, to address the underlying pattern of a left side forward compared to the right, even if they're both forward, the left side still probably be forward more, we still need to pull, use the left hamstring to pull the left pelvis back to get a neutral pelvis. At that point, whatever muscles are spasming and keeping you in that tilted position should relax. Okay, so we don't use the right leg to do it. So regardless of if, if the left side is higher, uh, you still want to use the left leg. You still want to use the left hamstring because underneath, whichever side is higher, underneath is still that pelvis on the, on the left forward compared to the right. And now I'm going to show how a PRI exercise for the left hamstring switches the position of the pelvis because I know it's kind of abstract. Uh, so the visual, I, will, I hope, will show you what these exercises do and how it repositions the pelvis. Okay, so when I'm lying in this 90-90 position, so my hips and knees are both net bent at 90 degrees, if your, position, if your pelvis is rotate, oriented to the right, so the left side is forward compared to the right, when you lie down, you're not really lying down like this. You're really lying down like this. Okay, so I'm going to exaggerate it. So this is really how you're lying down. You're not straight. Your upper body compensates to remain straight, but underneath your pelvis is actually lying down kind of like this, right? It's oriented to the right. So what I have to do is I have to get this left pelvis to come back and the right side to come forward. And how you do that, you just use your knees. So if I lift my butt up, all I have to do is this. This takes my weight off the right side, or orient, takes my pelvis from the right side and orients it straight or a little bit to the left. And you can feel your whole body weight shift. Now I take my right foot off the wall, and now my left hamstring is working. And as long as I breathe in through my nose, out through my mouth, get all the air out, my ribs 
position properly, I already feel it kicking in big time right now. And that is how you bring the left pelvis back into a neutral position. So that now you're lying here in a straight position and now the muscles have no reason to spasm. So just to reiterate, the, the exercise that I just showed is designed to take a pelvis that is oriented to the right, <coughs> excuse me, to the right, this is my right, and bring it back to a neutral position. We're doing that using the left hamstring. And you may ask why the left side is always com uh, forward compared to the right side. And it comes down to the diaphragm. The right diaphragm is much bigger and much stronger than the left diaphragm. And that has an influence on the lower spine. And over time, the normal pattern is that the, weak, the left side will weaken compared to the right side. And because of the power of the, rep, the right diaphragm, pulling the lower spine over to the right, less so than the left diaphragm pulling the lower spine to the left, we develop this completely normal pattern of right-sided dominance. So it really comes back to the diaphragm. Uh, you can do some research on that. I've done videos on it to explain that the right diaphragm truly is bigger and stronger and, and kind of the mechanics of why it brings you over to the right side.